Thank you, Ravi, for the kind introduction and uh, wonderful to see everybody after such a long time. Uh, I will uh, I'll start with uh, a small apology in the sense that uh, initially I was asked to talk about string theory and how it becomes strings become particles and stuff like that. Uh, but then I thought it would not be correct if the rest of theoretical physics of Tata Institute is not represented in this uh, meeting. So I undertook to do this sort of ominous job and I hope I have succeeded to some extent. Okay, so there is some uh, problem with the mic. Can you hear me? Okay, good. All right, so uh, this is the sort of brief plan of the talk. So begin with uh, Baba and then the early leadership the main areas and uh, the organization of summer and winter schools and major conferences. I speak a bit about the ICTS because uh, ICTS is 15 years old this year and uh, it's, it's some part of 40 years and, um, and about the future. Okay, good. So in the beginning, uh, <clears throat> the theoretical physics uh, group or department or whatever was uh, set up by Homi Bhava and the subject on which research and advanced teaching would be done would be theoretical physics especially on fundamental problems and with special reference to cosmic rays and nuclear physics. I, I have detailed many things in my slides which can be available later on for you to read but I will not go through the details because I have 65 slides. Okay. <laughs> You'll be here till all evening. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so early work, uh, research activity during the first period was almost entirely dominated by the personal work of Dr. Baba and was principally in the field of elementary particles. So theoretical physics at Tata Institute starts with elementary particle physics. And uh, this is some uh, brief uh, description of his work on relativistic quantum mechanical uh, description of mesons and nucleons, the Baba equations for higher spin particles, which of course are very, uh, very uh, contemporary even today in another avatar, which is called string theory. And uh, I'll talk about string theory a bit later on. So the, I wanted to emphasize that uh, uh, there is from the very beginning uh, uh, an emphasis on education at the Tata Institute. And uh, when it began, uh, people, very eminent people, actually like Alfred Dirac, Pauli, Rosenfeld, Serber, Wenzel, came and gave graduate courses. And in 1964, a regular graduate course program <clears throat> was evolved at the Institute aimed at making PhD training more and more systematic and broad-based. And the theoretical physics group has taken a leading part in developing this program. All this is a quote from this very beautiful volume of the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research from 1945 to 1970, which was brought out by the Institute during the directorship of uh, Professor Srikantan. Okay, so this is a very brief early history and uh, <clears throat> Baba's students, mentees like uh, Professor B.M. Udhankar, and K.S. Singh, we set up the theoretical physics group. That's my information from reading things from the archives also. And uh, Professor Udgankar, very well known to all of us, was a polymath. He was an amazing, amazing person with important contributions to particle physics, the pole theory, and in later years to physics education, actually. And sort of quite instrumental in setting up the Homi Bhava Center. And the condensed matter person was Professor Singhvi. And uh, these two photographs in black and white are from that volume. Now, <clears throat> around the time I joined, that's in 82, and around that, a bit earlier, Deepak and uh, Deepak Dhar and Mustansi Parma had also joined. So when we joined, the, the leadership of theoretical physics was uh, basically with uh, Professor Virendra Singh and Professor S.S. Chha. 
both of them were chairs of DTP and then became the directors of the Institute. So Professor Singh was a very distinguished high energy physicist with work in S matrix theory, high energy theorems, foundations of quantum mechanics, especially work with Professor S.M. Roy. And uh, Professor Jha was a condensed matter physicist, uh, very well known for his uh, important work on uh, nonlinear optics, surface enhanced Raman scattering, superconductivity, which I will mention a bit later also, and semiconductors. And uh, since I had to prepare this talk, I sought the help of all my friends and colleagues. So I just asked uh, Mustansir, Barma, Moldike, Sri Ruprai Chaudhary, Nilmani Mathur, uh, Shubhapalta Majumdar, Abhishek Dar, uh, Rama Govindrajan, P. Ajit, all of them to contribute uh, to me some material actually, which I can use for this talk. And the string theorists, I didn't ask one person, I asked all of them, because I didn't want any one of them to summarize what happened in string theory at TIFR. That privilege I kept for myself. Okay, so let's begin with the area of statistical and condensed matter physics in the Department of Theoretical Physics of TIFR Mumbai. Afterwards, I will talk of ICTS, in which I will also talk about uh, the same subject, but a bit later. Okay. All right, so let's talk about self-organized criticality and the sand pile model. So as you know that uh, uh, phase transitions occur when you tune parameters in a laboratory, like temperature, pressure, volume, etc. That's uh, but how do they happen in natural processes, big natural processes like earthquakes, etc.? And uh, there, there is no tuning. The tuning comes from the nonlinearities and the complexities of the system. And so, self-organized criticality is a property of dynamical systems that have an attractor, which is a critical point. Dynamical systems have attractors, and so it's a critical point that arises without tuning of any parameters. So it's a paradigm for the explanation of many natural phenomena like magnitudes of earthquakes, the frequency of aftershocks, fluctuations in the financial market, forest fires, etc. And uh, this is a very important subject to which uh, Deepak Dhar made a very fundamental contribution by finding a soluble model, which is called a sand pile model, and, uh, you know, solve exact solution, which uh, led to a very deep and a deep understanding of uh, the subject of uh, self-organized criticality. And then there were, of course, many other works, Satya and uh, Tribhid Sadhu, etc., uh, in, this, in this area. So next, uh, there's a lot of work by Mustansi Burma and collaborators about disordered driven systems. And... Uh, especially this uh, very important work on fluctuation dominated phase ordering in which long range order coexists with macroscopically large fluctuations and it replaces the normal critical state as a separatrix of ordered and disordered states in several equilibrium and non equilibrium systems so this is a, is a is a big body of work which is very very interesting and then of course there's a hexact solution deepak very very proud of this uh, because the exact solution of a model in more than in higher dimensions, actually, it's about uh, enumeration of directed branched polymers in general dimensions. And then uh, <clears throat> I forgot to mention perhaps earlier that uh, uh, Sriram Shastri, I'm not Sriram Shastri, yeah, Sriram Shastri uh, joined uh, the group at the same time as myself. And uh, here, I think he did a very, very beautiful piece of work in the in showing that the 1D Hubbard model, which is a, the Hubbard model is a paradigm of condensed matter, strongly coupled systems can be exactly solved. And, uh, you know, he, he found all the conservation laws and uh, also the Yang-Baxter equations, which underlie the integrability of this problem. Okay. Then there's work in superconductivity, which uh, Professor Jha had for a long year, many years. I remember talking to him about it also. Uh, in layered materials. Then there is this uh, work of uh, Mohit Randeria and collaborators. Mohit Randeria was a faculty member at the Data Institute. 
before he went to Ohio State University. And it was on the variational wave function study of high temperature superconductors. Then uh, Nandini Trivedi, who was also a faculty uh, before she went to um, Ohio State University, uh, did very nice work on uh, <clears throat> gaps across disordered, disorder induced superconductor in shuttle transitions. I know the details of only some of these works. So <clears throat> I cannot describe in detail all of them. And then there is, of course, this uh, interesting work by Nandini and a student, Rajdeep, uh, on low energy Higgs model. I would have thought that Mustansir would have written Higgs Anderson model, but he didn't do that. Interesting. Low energy Higgs mode in disordered superconductors. Okay. Then there is a <clears throat> work by the younger people of the group, uh, <clears throat> also Rajdeep Sensarma and uh, Satya Majumdar when he was young at that time, 1998, uh, on uh, many aspects of uh, non-equilibrium processes, uh, similar to Bose-Einstein condensation, but in real space, not in momentum space. Usually we discuss condensation in momentum space, but it's in real space, very interesting. Uh, uh, description of that uh, way of describing condensation. Then there is a schwinger keldish field theory for entanglement entropy and dynamics of correlated systems, which was done by Rajdeep and collaborators. This is this keldish schwinger theory is very important to understand the quantum field theory of open systems. So it's a, it's a nice piece of work. <clears throat> and then large deviations in Non-equilibrium dynamics is a, is a very important subject. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, Tribid and collaborators uh, have done some very interesting work. Conditional large deviation of local density were found exactly in interacting stochastic system. Okay. Then there is work uh, in statistical mechanics from people doing string theory. Now, I'm going to mix up everything because you see, you think string theories only do string theory. No, they do many aspects of theoretical physics, actually, which impact on their origin, their sort of what shall I say, dreamt goal of finding out the laws of the universe. But on the way, you, you pick up very beautiful things, and there is a very nice piece of work here of how systems, uh, integrable field theories, thermalize. And this connection to generalized uh, Gibbs ensemble by Gautam Mandel and his students. All right, so now let's move to high energy physics at DTP. There's a lot of, I mean, my friends provided me with seven slides of all the work that was done now that then I asked them to reduce it. So Amul sent me four slides, but even four slides is a lot for me to get to. So I'll go a little bit rapidly over here. And uh, I would say that these search strategies for top walk, which were initiated by D.P. Roy and then by Godpole and Pakwasa is a very important piece of work. And uh, also search methods for charge Higgs bosons were pioneered by D.P. Roy and uh, Devashish Chaudhary, Sri Rup Rai Chaudhary and Mushayat. So there are many, many very interesting, important developments here, but this uh, uh, strategies for the discovery of the top quark, I would like to especially mention. Then there is the beyond standard model flavor physics. And uh, then there is this very important uh, uh, development. So in, in theoretical physics, uh, many, many new subjects, uh, moment uh, cutting edge areas begin. Uh, people uh, uh, sort of start subgroups. And this is in neutrino physics and astrophysics. It's a very important development and uh, here <laughs> the very important works by Amol Dige and Basudev uh, Dasgupta and their collaborators who are really uh, you know who have a piece of that plot actually internationally. Now let me mention some uh, something which I did I mean I was a bit very hesitant to put in my work here but 
you have to be correct to yourself also. So, uh, so here are two uh, two works in uh, quantum chromodynamics. There's a lot of quantum chromodynamics uh, in all the slides I showed you, collider physics, for example. But uh, here is a very very important thesis. Uh, by Avinash Dar in 1983. This was his PhD thesis uh, from here. So he provided a complete solution to the problem of the renormalization scheme dependence of perturbative approximants to physical quantities. Now the point is the following, that whenever you do quantum field theory, you evaluate coupling constants, etc. It's a scale. But in an experiment, uh, how, do you, how do you make a connection to an experimental result, which is scheme independent? And that problem was solved by Avinash. I have read very nice things written by, you know, many experts, especially Stan Brodsky about this work. And then uh, <clears throat> uh, here's uh, something else actually. So uh, the in the early 80s and 70s, what was the biggest problem high energy theory people were wanting to solve? They wanted to solve the problem of quark confinement. Why are quarks confined in this world, okay? So that is, that is what led to lattice gauge theories, which I will talk about uh, briefly. And, uh, but I had, uh, but suppose you're not working with big machines. Uh, suppose you're not a Wilsonian actually, then what would you do? Then you would try to develop an effective Lagrangian method actually. So one fact about quantum chromodynamics we know very well is that the spectrum of the theory of this very complicated theory has a mass gap. There is a massive particle, which is of lowest mass. That's the glue ball. And given that fact, what type of effective Lagrangian you can sort of write down? So we explored this. And so we proposed the old Nambujanala senior type model as a low energy model for quantum chromodynamics. Actually. And uh, this work has been quite useful on many levels, especially to people in nuclear physics also. And uh, the derivations given in this uh, paper are about anomalous terms in the effective action, uh, which we derived as if they are a Berry phase. And of course, if you see the, 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 the year of our paper, we didn't know about Berry's work, of course. I mean, it's, it's just contemporary. The Berry did much more general for any Hamiltonian system, slowly mating parameters, what phases you get. But uh, this, uh, this had to do with this very specific problem of QCD, where we found the Berry phase uh, of low energy pion physics. Okay, so lattice gauge theory. So, in a nutshell, you know, for all of you who uh, perhaps uh, work in other areas, lattice gauge theory is a non perturbative formulation of a gauge theory in which gauge invariance is exact, but there is no Lorentz invariance because you're putting it on a lattice, a cubical lattice or whatever. And so Lorentz invariance is broken. Yeah, I cannot resist telling you this, that I was at the meeting when in Wilson announced it when I was a student and uh, that gauge invariance is exact, not Lorentz invariance. And the whole audience and very eminent people were sitting there, just stood up and said, oh my God, what is he saying? Okay, but this is an old subject. I'm talking of the early 80s. And there's a lot of work at the Tata Institute uh, in this area. Uh, <clears throat> it's non-perturbative investigation of energy spectra and structures of subatomic particles. Uh, which this is all at zero temperature physics. Uh, lots of such in investigations about uh, ultra relativistic heavy ion collisions, quark gluon plasma, et cetera, et cetera. So I can't detail all of it, but it's on the slide. You can see it afterwards. All right. Then there is a, a niche area of uh, finite temperature, finite temperature uh, lattice gauge theories, where you explore what happens when you heat up the lattice, what happens when you turn on a chemical potential, etc. So here there is a very uh, important work by Rajiv Gavai and uh, Surendra Gupta about the, the nature of the phase diagram. 
just uh, put this phase diagram here as a function of temperature on the y-axis and the chemical potential barrier number or quark number on the x-axis. And, you know, their lattice calculations uh, did see the critical point uh, approximately for the first time. And I think it had an impact on the RIC. RIC, RIC is the facility at uh, Brookhaven Collider Program to verify their prediction, which is very impressive. And then there's this uh, very important work by, from India by Sorandu and Vedangadas Mohanty uh, from uh, NISA on uh, <clears throat> further understanding of the phase diagram and their, and their calculation of the critical temperature is something like 175 MeV, which in more common parlance is something like two trillion degrees centigrade. Okay, so this is the important work in lattice case theory uh, at the department here. Very computationally heavy. Uh, yeah, most of important science is computation. All right, there's one more thing I like to mention here is the work by Sandeep uh, Trivedi and his students on the definition of entanglement entropy in a lattice regulated gauge theory. And this, this is not trivial problem. It's a very beautiful, uh, important problem. Now they have provided one solution for uh, a definition of the von Neumann entropy of uh, in a lattice gauge theory. Von Neumann entropy, I don't want to go into detail, is a measure of entanglement between various parts of a quantum system. So usually it is not very, Difficult to define it. You just take a, a spin system, you know, make a make a small uh, sort of a, you know area in a two-dimensional spin system, and you ask uh, what is the entanglement of that those many spins with the rest of them. And it's not very difficult to define. But in the gauge theory, you can't do that because you have to respect Gauss's law, and uh, they found the definition for the von Neumann entropy, which I think is important. Okay, now let me come to string theory. All right. <clears throat> so when we began working in the newly ushered area of string theory in 1984, we worked within the umbrella of the high energy physics unit in the theory group, which was the biggest unit. And the number of string theorists in DTP grew mainly due to the support and encouragement of Professor Viren Singh, who recognized the importance of the questions string theory attempts to answer, which I will mentioned in the next slide. Hence, in the early 1990s, before Professor Jha stepped down as chair of the department, he, he called some of us, I don't remember who else it was, to his office and said that we, have, we are planning to have a new unit in the Department of Theoretical Physics. It's, so we gave it a broad name, not only string theory, but also mathematical physics, because there were other people like Ashok Raina, who were working on, and Devakaran working on mathematical physics. Okay, fine. string theory, mathematical physics. Ah, that was a liberation, it's amazing. Because <laughs> there was this, all this talk all around us that uh, string theory is not science. And uh, I think uh, these leaders uh, really were very helpful and instrumental in, uh, in making space for us because they appreciated the type of questions these people were trying to address and answer. And the quality of the people who were involved in doing this also plays a very important role. So this enabled the group to grow and invite some of the best people in the subject worldwide, went and got all of these guys um, to become. So it became one of the top string theory groups in the world. And uh, I, I can, I, I checked it with a few people, actually, so it's not a totally personal opinion, but I think if you take all the areas of curiosity-driven research in this country, uh, I, I think um, any of them, physics, mathematics, biology, uh, there was this time when this uh, string theory group, and I think it's true now also, uh, it, 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 it's perhaps uh, in the first five in the world, actually. And uh, it'll be difficult to find other groups, actually, other. And we should strive for that 
to be in the first five in the world in all the areas in which we work at the Tata Institute. I think this ambition is very important. And this, this, this was a driver in the way we do string theory, way we did the string theory group in Tata Institute. We wanted to beat the Americans. That was our main point. And I think to some extent we succeeded, I mean, in doing that. I, I have lots of American friends. I shouldn't be talking this way, but that's a good competitor. Okay. So here is a slide on why string theory. You must all be wondering what is it all about? So it's a theory in the making. Firstly, we, there is no theory as yet. And it has its origins in high energy physics of strongly interacting particles. It's a new paradigm of physics in which the laws physics are formulated in terms of extended objects rather than point particles. This is a one line summary of what it is. But historically, the extended object that <laughs> led to all this was a string. That's why it's called string theory. But it's not really a theory of strings. It's a theory of extended objects. And those extended objects can be one dimensional up to nine dimensions. They're called brains. The string is a one brain. Okay, so the work in TIFR, both in Mumbai and Bangalore, has explored and contributed to various important physics questions since 1984. First, what is string theory? What is it? I mean, can we discover a fundamental mathematical structure of it? Can string theory resolve the conundrums presented by the fact that black holes radiate? That's the Hawking problem, which I will come to. Can string theory provide a basis for the cosmology to an expanding universe? Can string theory provide a basis in a language, language to discuss questions like the origin of the universe or the multiverse? You may need a new language, just like quantum mechanics forced us into a new language. They may need a new language to understand the so-called origin or whatever of the universe. All right, so just describe a few of the early works. Uh, so our work on the Nambu-Jonal Asinia model in QCD immediately led us to working in string theory, independent of what happened in Aspen in 1984. That's nice. <laughs> so uh, we, we began working in string theory. We started uh, with our students. So I knew one thing is that if you want to grow a subject, you have to grow its you have to go your constituency. You need students, postdocs, and excellent faculty. So we started doing all that. And here are some of the early works, uh, string propagation on group manifolds with uh, Sanjay Jain and R. Shankar. These were my first two students. And uh, then there is work on geometric background field method by Sunil Mukhi. And also this program of Mathur Mukhi and Sen on trying to understand rational conformal field theories in two dimensions. So all this work has to do with classical solutions of string theory, classical solutions, because you're looking at conformal field theories. Don't ask me why, but classical. So you wonder about uh, how to do string theory. I mean, how to discover that theory. So here Ashok Sen came up with her, with her conjecture and a very um, literally outrageous idea. And the clue was basically, I mean, uh, since you're mostly familiar with condensed matter, in the icing model, you have a high low temperature duality, right? High temperature phase can map into low temperature phase and you will tweak the degrees of freedom slightly. Or if you admit magnetic monopoles in electromagnetism, you have an electric magnetic duality. Okay? So strong coupling becomes weak coupling. All right, so Ashok uh, Sen, uh, thought about discussing his duality, this weak coupling, strong coupling duality. If you start a weakly coupled theory, is it possible to make a transformation to other degrees of freedom where the theory is strongly coupled? So in that way, a strongly coupled theory can be understood in terms of a weakly coupled degrees of freedom. And uh, yeah, so for certain supersymmetric theories, a systematic procedure for testing such conjectures was developed by studying the spectrum of supersymmetric states. Supersymmetry is not found. Perhaps this is one of its most important applications that you can do calculations without going to a computer. You can do analytic calculations. And this procedure was later used by others. Others means Ed Witten 
for conjecturing new relations between theories and testing conjectures and eventually real, led to the realization that apparently different string theories are all different descriptions of a single underlying theory. So there is this big theory we don't know anything about. We know a little bit of little corners and we know how those corners map into each other. So at least you know that, uh, you know, there is an enormously huge structure somewhere there. It's there. And this is some sort of an existence of that type of big structure. Okay, then there was a work on matrix models, uh, exploring, uh, so it's all statistical mechanics, basically. This is, there's no string theory here, except that uh, it, it somehow comes from trying to understand strings propagating in uh, lower dimensions. Uh, so this is some work over here. And uh, let me just move on because uh, I have a long way to go, my God. So, string theory is a theory of gravity, right? So it must uh, it must uh, describe black holes. I mean, there are lots of issues about black holes which I will come to. So I think this is the first example of a black hole in two-dimensional string theory, which was found by us. <coughs> exact solution in just way back in 1991. And uh, I think the three of us were all at the Institute for Advanced Studies in Princeton. Um, so, and we were competing with somebody, <laughs> competing with Ed Witten for this solution. <clears throat> the special significance of this was uh, the fact that uh, for the first time, uh, this type of work raised the important question whether if you have a black hole or if you have any complex object, whether the degrees of freedom and the dynamics of this object can be encoded in an object in one lower dimension. And in this case, it was a matrix. Later on, uh, that matrix was replaced by an entire quantum field theory. And that was the famous uh, ADS-CFT uh, conjecture by Juan Maldacena in 1996. But this was the first uh, sort of uh, glimpse at that. And then there's this very nice work by Ashok Sen on uh, extremal black holes and elementary string states. He tried to understand the black hole entropy, Bekenstein Hawking formula as a statistical formula. I mean, he, he, he made an attempt to do that. And uh, it's, it's not exact because uh, the black hole is too small to be understood classically, but at least this attempt is significant. Then if string theory is a complete theory of quantum gravity, it should account not only for the leading bekenstein hawking formula, but also quantum corrections. And that was done by Atish Dabolka when he was here. And uh, there's also the attractor mechanism for non-supersymmetric black holes. Means how do, how do you trust a strong coupling calculation when there is no supersymmetry? So these people found a nice mechanism for that. Okay. Now comes... Uh, important part of the story that uh, the uh, information paradox arose from the work of Stephen Hawking in 74, as you know. Uh, he once lectured on this stage, if you remember, in 2001. In his treatment of quantized matter interacting with uh, classical black holes, uh, Hawking demonstrated that black holes radiate thermally. This is in conflict with unitary evolution in quantum mechanics. And in attempts to resolve this type of uh, problem, uh, physicists uh, beginning with Strominger and Waffa discovered that a black hole is just like a ordinary dynamical system, like a piece of gold, which uh, obeys the laws of quantum statistical mechanics. And in fact, this was made very precise uh, by Maldacena in his great discovery that if you take uh, gravitational phenomena in anti-decitor space-time, anti-decitor space-time, if you have a box, basically, then um, the uh, stuff, all the black holes and the dynamics, black holes, is all coded in the boundary. So this is the holographic description. And so we began uh, uh, trying to understand Hawking radiation in this model of Strominger and Waffa, and we succeeded in doing that, and that played a very important role in the uh, Maldacena's uh, work on the ADS CFT correspondence. I'll go fast now. Black holes. Now, cosmology is an important uh, question, but string theory has to somehow accommodate. Can string theory accommodate the experimental fact that uh, there is a 
positive energy density, all pervasive in the universe, like uh, 10 to the minus 8 Earths per cubic centimeter. So the cosmological con this is the equal to the cosmological constant divided by 8 pi g. That's why it's such a tiny number. So Kachru, Kalosh, Linde, and Trivedi, popularly called KKLT, proposed a scenario in string theory. A scenario that can realize the fact that the cosmological constant is positive. And uh, their work has uh, been very influential. And uh, I think still there's a lot of interest in it, a lot of debate. Within effective field theory, they gave a model in which this is possible. And I think this is a very important contribution. Because, uh, okay, so I have to say this actually. So, 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 so the sort of the ground state of string theory with so many vacuum and saddle points is, is not very dissimilar from a spin glass, actually. Okay, I'll just make that provocative comment and leave you. So there's a landscape, and where in the landscape is our universe? Where are we? Are all very pressing, important, fascinating questions. Okay, let me move. So then there is uh, more work on dualities, integrability in string theory, all contributes to our general understanding. And uh, then we come to the, uh, after Maldasena's famous discovery, uh, the group over here, uh, Shiraz Minwala and his uh, students and collaborators uh, made a surprising and precise connection between two of the best studies, partial differential equations in theoretical physics, namely Einstein's equations and Navier-Stokes equation. Now, in, in, in one line, the point is the following, that if you have a black hole and the black hole has a horizon, right? The one way gate, you fall in, you can't come out. If you throw something in, it jitters a little bit. So the jitters of the horizon of a black hole can be mapped into solutions of the Navier-Stokes equation in that gravitational box, which was given to us by Maldasena. That, that is the, this is a very important big discovery, this one. It's done here. Okay. Then there is a 10-year project on Chern Simon's theory. Shiraz, uh, mainly Shiraz, and many of us uh, have also contributed on the way, but uh, I just don't have the time to detail this. You can read about it here. Then there are this work on uh, trying to understand how unique is the graviton, how unique is Einstein's theory of gravity. So Einstein's theory of gravity gives rise to uh, calculational methods for scattering matrices. String theories also do. So from the S matrix actually, and uh, the number of such S matrices possible, can we glean what is the underlying uh, sort of, you know, what is unique? about string theory, Einstein's theory, et cetera. So I, I just don't want to detail this. I'm terribly running out of time. How many minutes? Oh, I started 10 minutes late, no? Given that. Okay, I'll, I'll take a little bit more time if you don't mind. I'm covering 40 years, so please. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so there's a, uh, in 2010, we, uh, the invited Chubabrata Majumdar from the, sorry. Okay, thank you, I'll do that. Okay, so uh, in 2010, we uh, began doing cosmology as a subject, as a unit in the theory group over here. So there are lots of interesting uh, things which uh, people have been doing. Uh, Subhaprata Majumdar and uh, Rishi Khatri and uh, Girish Kulkarni and other collaborators. I will uh, just, uh, so there's this work. Then the theory group has also brought out many monographs and organized many conferences, including Strings 2001 and Strings 2015, which are very big and successful conferences. Uh, Stephen Hawking was here for 2001. All right, so I thought it's important to also include the theory work done in Hyderabad. So here it is. And I think mostly it is in the area of soft condensed matter physics and uh, fluid dynamics. So I thought I should mention the work of uh, Perlekar and Ramola Kabir, who was a student. 
and Samajit Karmarkar, who is a postdoc of Giorgio Parisi. So it's very interesting works. And Surajit Sengupta, the late Surajit Sengupta, was a good friend of mine also. Yeah. All right. So last five minutes, so whatever I want to cover about ICTS. Uh, so ICTS is, uh, it is a baby of the theory group here. So in that sense, I have to talk about it. Okay, so yeah. So the, okay, the idea to create a center such as the ICTS was born in 2001, after the success of Strings 2001, when we knew that we are, in, we, have, we have done, we are somewhere in our subject. And a visit to the Infosys campus in Bangalore. I mean, uh, that you can create such facilities in India. In Baba created one here, but uh, in the succeeding years, I didn't see anything. But Infosys campus was a eye opener. And uh, so, all of you know about the ICTS. Many of you have been there, and so it's unique in India as an international science hub that could transform the ways of doing scientific research and science education, established in August uh, 2007. And I just wanted to say that the ICTS, creation of the ICTS was a very huge collective effort by people from DIFR, from the department here, from the DAE. I should especially mention Raj Pillay, who helped a lot, actually. Uh, during the difficult years of the ICTS. <clears throat> so I have just, uh, uh, Professor Rao and uh, uh, Dr. Kasuri Rangan, who were very supportive of this whole thing, of this whole initiative. And this is Professor David Gross, who guided me <laughs> of how to go about doing it, actually. <laughs> and this is Avinash Dar, whom you all know, and uh, Mukesh Tudain, who was. Uh, working with us as our assistant, and Uma Madhavan, special officer, officer on special duty from DAE, and the TIFR was also very instrumental. So this is my team, the early team actually with which I worked, and without, without them, I think it's hard to imagine that the ICTS would have happened really. It is, it is not easy. They helped me a lot. All these six people were so instrumental, and many others actually. It's, if you had given me two hours to talk, I would have put many more photographs. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so here are some achievements uh, which I thought. Uh, so very important, it's not just an org conference organizing center. You have to remove it from your head that ICTS is that. It is, it is one of the best theory institutes in the world today in what it does. This you can check. It is also involved in, in organizing programs and uh, conferences, colloquia, and has a very active science outreach and popularization program. So these are the three missions of the ICTS and they all rest on the first one. The research faculty has to be first rate and very strong. Okay, enough about the ICTS. I'm sorry, I have to say it, I have to say it. So I'm saying the truth. So. <laughs> there are these areas of research. Now we have growing uh, quantum fields and strings and gravity from which it all came, fluid dynamics, uh, climate dynamics, computational and physical biology, statistical and condensed matter physics, mathematics and computer science, uh, astrophysics and cosmology. And my assistant made this chart. Then I told her to put this ring. You see, they are all connected. It, at IC, ICTS, science is one story, basically. In some deep sense, that's true. And uh, yeah, so th this is what we do. And uh, maybe 10 years later, when some other person gives a talk on the ICTS, you'll have many more such things all connected. And uh, for that, we need more land. Okay, so this is the faculty. And these are some pictures about the ICTS, which uh, uh, those who have not been may have a look actually. So this, this is the, the red one is the library building. The, this is the inside of the library. It is designed like the Guggenheim Museum in New York. This is our computer center and uh, this is our auditorium. And these are the spaces outside the cafeteria. And I think the, uh, there was a beautiful photograph of the ICTS uh, as you walk in shown by Jairam in his uh, presentation. Okay, so this is in pictures. This is the work the people do, statistical mechanics, condensed matter. I think it's the 
strongest statistical mechanics group in India. And maybe, in, I mean, lack, I mean, you know, really uh, world class. Uh, I cannot, I'm not an insider, so I can't say first five, first 10 or something, but really up there. Okay. Uh, so they do many, many, many interesting and important things. So I just don't want to detail. Then we also have biophysics, actually. Any theory institute worth its name should study how biological systems work. And with some good advice uh, in the beginning, when we started, uh, we started biophysics at ICTS. So the theorists working on biology in collaboration with experimentalists uh, at NCBS or elsewhere. Okay. And uh, so, so at ICTS, we have this whole group of complex systems. Uh, one of them works on, uh, you know, so it's a collection of people working in partial differential equations, uh, uncertainty quantification, earth sciences, and uh, fluid dynamics, turbulence, etc. All those words characterize something for you, but we have put them all together to address a very important question about the Indian monsoon, actually. So it's not exactly a climate thing because, you know, climate is more, the scale is longer, but uh, this is about, uh, you know, weather. Understanding the monsoon is very important for India. So treating rainfall as a probabilistic manifestation of underlying dynamics, they showed, these people showed <clears throat> that most monsoon days of the past 110 years can be described by one out of 10 patterns, such as the one that I have actually shown you on top over here. Then there is a lot of work in trying to understand clouds, enigmatic stuff, right? Because they are upheld there by turbulence. And also other studies in turbulence, which I mentioned here, but I cannot go into it. Then there is data assimilation, nonlinear dynamics, fluid turbulence. I, I always believe that it's very important for physicists to work in all these areas and uh, collaborate with mathematicians to find out about uh, fundamental problems of turbulence, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, uh, then we have a very strong group on gravitational wave physics and astronomy, and now uh, we call it astrophysics and cosmology. Uh, so the very important work has been done already uh, in this area at ICTS, uh, especially, for example, when the discovery of the gravitational wave signals uh, in 2015, uh, the, from the binary uh, coalescing, uh, the, uh, the um, for example, the mass and spin, the final parameters of the uh, final state black hole were uh, calculated at ICTS in that in that computer center I showed you. That's amazing, right? It's very encouraging. So a lot of work in gravitational lensing of gravitational waves and uh, gravitational waves as a probe into the early universe is also a very important question because ultimately we'll find out about how the universe began only from signatures of gravitational waves, which are not screened by anything, right? Then there is a very important work on resolution of the so-called information puzzle by Surat Raju and collaborators, uh, which brought out the important fact of the fact that gravity, in gravity, you lose locality, which you are very much used to in usual quantum field theory. And uh, Surat Raju has made very seminal contributions in this uh, whole area. I, I just don't have the time to detail it, but uh, uh, Information in gravity is localized in very unusual ways. Okay. Fine. Then uh, there is this whole program of uh, Rajesh Kopakumar for many years now to derive the so-called ADS-CFT correspondence. Okay. And uh, explicitly working out soluble models in which this is possible, the so-called tensionless limit of string theory, when the string tension goes to zero, that is the the mass, the energy per unit length goes to zero. And I, I think this is an important, uh, slowly progressing, slowly. It's a very hard problem, very old problem, but there is good work. And uh, with uh, <clears throat> uh, Nidhya Sina, 
Apitim Kaviraj and Kalal Sen Rajesh Dice DS is also doing some work on conformal bootstrap. Some a way in which you can in for example, the practical application of this is that uh, epsilon expansions in critical phenomena can be done in a much more powerful and fast way. So it's it's uh, interesting. Offshoot. These are all offshoots of string theory. And then, of course, uh, here is the work of uh, Logan Iagam, uh, who has worked on the Geldish Schwinger method. And uh, so, effective action for fluid Dirac's and Schwinger Geldish formulation. Uh, and uh, the first derivation of a nonlinear Langevin equation using the Geldish formalism. Uh, usually, noise in statistical physics is uh, Gaussian, right? But noise is not always Gaussian. There are corrections. There are non-Gaussian corrections. And how to handle them in a systematic way, I think, was first done by uh, Lugnaigam and his collaborators. OK, and this is uh, something I had to put in, because I've also been working at the ICTS so, <laughs> in, in physics, but collaborating mainly with uh, Gautam and students and with Avinash when he was there. And uh, we have. Uh, I, we have been trying to understand in the SYK model, it's a very soluble model, how a black hole forms and how it evaporates. And there's a surprising results over here that for the evaporation process, I mean, which we didn't know anything about, uh, <clears throat> the fully evaporated black hole exhibits very large fluctuations of the metric. I can't explain all this very easily, but this is an important result, I believe, actually. Okay, and now the future, just two slides. This has to be said. So I, I have picked up the courage because of my age, as Pillay said, to say a few things. So first we started with high energy physics in theory group, right? Then condensed matter physics was added. Then statistical physics was added with the induction of Deepak and Mustansir. And uh, after that, uh, string theory was added. So there are there were high energy physics, condensed matter, statistical physics, string theory. Then we added in 2010 cosmology, because we felt it's important to incorporate all these subjects in our department. And uh, <clears throat> then at ICTS, uh, I consider it just part of TIFR. Okay, no, no, no difference in my mind. Uh, high energy physics, condensed matter, statistical physics, string theory, cosmology, gravitational waves, climate dynamics. Biological physics. I think you should think about uh, perhaps here also or in Hyderabad doing all these things. And uh, my feeling is that it would be important to grow in the areas of quantum information and quantum science. Quantum in the sense of what entanglement implies for physics and for other things. And uh, here it's an extremely rich area where you can have an enormous uh, interaction with experimentalists and there are outstanding experimentalists in this place working on areas which are very close to this type of quantum technologies and quantum science. So that's that's one thing about the areas. The second is uh, about administration infrastructure. Please never underestimate this point. And this Homi Baba has said it many, many times. And I think uh, uh, we all need to learn from his early writings how important he thought administration infrastructure was. So the Department of Theoretical Physics and other departments too, it's not only for, I'm the, the chair of the department is sitting right here. I can see him there. Uh, could try to achieve greater administrative and financial autonomy uh, in, a, in our institute to decentralize actually. The, our departments are as big as centers. So they should be given more responsibilities and, uh, they sh and then they should be made accountable. So that's important. So it could also do better with an advisory board, especially if it would like to explore new areas of research. This is a very useful, very useful to take advice. I think I felt key in Data Institute, people don't like to take advice. This was explicitly told to me <laughs> when I found my <laughs> international advisory board for the ICTS. But it's important to take advice. You should be humble. And uh, you could try to improve the infrastructure, and this will surely enhance the academic environment, restructure things, 
uh, in my time, we put some sofas near the elevator so that all the people can start discussing and there were blackboards and all that. And then I, I was so delighted to see that there is a blackboard on the fourth floor and the students are working there. This was uh, not allowed by one director saying that, oh, the council meets here. So, <laughs> but it has happened, I'm very happy. And the last thing I want to say is that uh, I think uh, there is this whole issue of ease of doing science in India. It is very hard to do science in India today. Visitors cannot visit us very easily. Experimentalists uh, have enormous difficulty in, uh, in uh, you know, getting materials, equipment, chemicals. I mean, since I was involved in uh, writing the DPR of the National Research Foundation, so many people had mentioned about the ease of doing science as a fundamental plank there. I think uh, we need a movement of scientists and uh, I would urge every one of you, including people in the Department of Theoretical Physics to come out and join this movement and convince the government that you cannot do science in the way they are uh, with all the filters and difficulties that are put in our way. So with, with these few words, and I'm very sorry for going over time. I thank you very much for your Thank you very much. <laughs> so thank God there are no questions. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So.